Does it, when when all these guys were taking Ambien, does Ambien allow you to reach that REM cycle, or oh. does it interfere with that? Man, you're you're a smart guy. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Like this is like you're go- <laughs> like that's a nice because if these guys have all these problems, but they're taking Ambien, that's a nice little underhand t-ball hit. All right, all right. So, uh, yeah. So we know how crooked the whole medical system is now. Yeah, Co- yeah, COVID, yeah. COVID has unveiled anyone uh, if anyone ever had any doubts it's unveiled that how crooked everything is so when the farm when pharma applies for uh, approval of a drug pharma does the research pharma owns the research mm. and then they give the fda what they want to and they say well this proves our case here and they have all this stuff that that doesn't prove that their proves case. their case is wrong. Right. right. And they don't share that. <laughs> they don't they have, get to choose. They get to choose. The, uh, can the FBI request all that? Or the, uh, sorry, not FBI. FDA. Can, what? They they they're like there's some push and pull, but it's but not there's much. Probably some not much collusion because, because, because well, whatever. the FDA is funded by pharma. Right. right? Exactly. So that's where yeah. the budget comes from. Yeah. Right. A lot of people don't know this. The the application fee for the Pfizer vaccine is three point five billion dollars. Hmm. Pay us three point five billion dollars, and we'll let you know if we're gonna mm-hmm. approve your drug or not, right? Sure. Um, all right. So, um, but somebody files a lawsuit, and they go to court, and now you start seeing. Now you have to. Now you have to start pumping out all the research in court, and so now mm-hmm. everything. You know. Now you pull. You know. Pull up the dress and pull on the knickers, like everything. Right. Now every, we see it's it on all. full display. Right. So that had just happened with Ambien. It just happened like a year before all this happened, right before I ran into this. So I got to find out what really happens with Ambien because before it was like, it's just totally safe drug. It's non-addictive. You take it, you go to sleep, you you feel great. It's the same type of sleep. And you're just going to feel great. And it's the best thing out there. So, and and that's why all the seals were taking it because like, they they thought it was just the same type of sleep. They they would get if they could sleep normally. Yeah. And they thought it was completely benign. Like they wouldn't, they wouldn't give every seal an antidepressant. They wouldn't give every seal like anything, but this was just like, Oh yeah, you know, it's like Benadryl or something. I right? like whatever. It's like over the counter here. Just like take it. Right. And so like eighty five percent of the seals were taking Ambien to some degree, and a lot of them took it every single night. And if you know seals, if one's good, two's probably better, three's probably fantastic, mm-hmm. and you're superhuman, mm-hmm. so you probably need three. Mm-hmm. So they're taking way more than they should. Damn. And you know that, and it doesn't work. Um, and so at some level, they feel like it doesn't work, and so then they're chasing it down with cocktails and like taking you know, you know two or three cocktails and there are three ambient and as they build up a bit of a tolerance maybe. <laughs> and yeah. then, and then they go lay in bed. Um, and then they wake up at three in the morning, four in the morning and they can't get back to sleep. So like, well, I'm going to go to work and just work out really hard and not take any breaks and not rest and not take a nap. And then I'll come home and I'll be really tired tonight. And then I'll fall back to sleep and I'll fall asleep. And then like, you know, how long have mm-hmm. you been trying that? Like four years. You know, oh like, man. Keep going. It's, it's going. Today's the day. Today's the day, Right. So it's not, that's not going to work. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, I find out because of the research is, that's come out, Ambien destroys about 80% of REM sleep and about 20% of deep sleep. Alcohol destroys about 80% of deep sleep and 20% of REM sleep. So once I got onto the sleep idea, I was like, I should do some sleep studies on these guys and see every single seal I studied. I had a, had a sleep study done on 99.9% or 99 to 90%. 99.1 to 99.9 percent stage two sleep, which we consider transitional sleep. So it's not REM and it's not deep. Mm. It's the transition in between. Um, so when you know enough about sleep, it's hard to believe that they even survived that. Honestly, like yeah. I, I don't know how that. I don't That's know. what their sleeping status was when you studied them. Yep. Is so, that on Ambien? So or that's no? yeah. That's them using their Ambien and alcohol. Okay. I'd like do whatever you always do. And oh, go, okay. Go and you would study study, that. Right. Yeah. So then pretty quickly I started reading the research and I'm like, we got to get everybody off Ambien and we got to get everybody to quit drinking so much. Like I'm not going to try to tell seals not to drink, but like we're, I'm going to educate them on this what, is what this could is probably what's happen. Happening. Yeah. And of course what motivates them is performance. And so I could talk to them about growth hormone and testosterone, like how all of that's regulated while you're asleep. And if you have the testosterone of a 12 year old girl, it's because you, you're not releasing it when mm-hmm. you're asleep and you should be releasing it during sleep. And if you're drinking alcohol, you're messing with that. And if you're taking Ambien, you're messing right. with that. And like, right. and you complaining about your motivation, you're complaining about your concentration and you're complaining about like all, like all these cognitive things and memory and all. well, that's you're losing that from the REM sleep. So if you're going to do that, like you're going to keep having those symptoms and they could all identify with it. And so literally change the culture. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then, and, and 
I'm not exaggerating. This is a literal statement. I got laughed out of the leadership offices when I told them this. Like, our guy's testosterone is low because they're not sleeping. <laughs> okay, doc, yeah. Wow. You're, like, you're, like, we got a special one here. And they thought I was the dumbest guy on the planet. Uh, and nobody was talking about this. Like, every, like in the last you know, 10 years, this has popped up in, like, sleep, free, sleep, sleep experts are everywhere now. They've been talking about this. Uh, um, but there was nothing. I mean, it, uh, like, I... And if it existed, I couldn't find it. And like, I, I figured this stuff out as I was going along. Hey everybody. Thank you for checking out this clip from the good trip podcast brought to you by doc Parsley's sleep remedy. Get a discount on my personal favorite sleep supplement that I have integrated into my nightly routine to help me optimize my sleep by checking out docparsley.com slash Brent. And if you're not a big tea drinker, there are capsules available as well. Either way, you're going to have an awesome sleep and wake up ready to have an amazing day with Doc Parsley's Sleep Remedy.